just about everything in America is better than it is in Russia, except for one or two things. Let's continue with that. So, this is relevant when we have a composition, when one function is defined as a composition of two other functions, and we know that its derivative is governed by the chain rule, which you have on the board. So what I'm going to do now, so that I'm able to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, is integrate both sides from A to B. I'll just reverse this equality and I'll say that the integral of this equals the integral of this. So here's what we have. By the way, what we're deriving now is something that you could have absolutely done yourself, invented it yourself if it hadn't already been invented, because we're doing the one thing that's natural to do when you have derivatives, and that's to take the integral. And why is it natural? It's natural because we have the fundamental, fundamental theorem, theorem of calculus. calculus, so it'll tell us what to do with the derivative of that sort of thing. Okay, dx. So this is the kind of combination, it looks complicated now, but it's actually encountered in real life all the time. And we'll illustrate this with an example, which maybe we don't do enough of in this class. And by the chain rule formula, it equals the integral of h prime of x. And now we're going to use the only theorem that we have at our disposal, which by the way is not a theorem, but it is called the fundamental theorem of calculus, and of course this equals h of b minus h of a. And I will now recall the definition of h, that it's the composition of f and g, and I will write this, and it's nice that these two integrals line up. It is f of g of b minus f of g of a, right? Because h of a is, just plug in a on the right side, and we get f. You see how we got here? A direct application of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which occurred right here. And then we used the definition of h, and then we got an expression like this, and an expression like this very much looks like the right-hand side of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're going to use it again in reverse. So I can kind of come up with an integral where upon the application of the fundamental theorem of calculus you would get an expression like this. And of course it'll be an integral from g of a to g of b. Do you see how I'm doing this? Right? I'm just trying to make use of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, and I see f of something minus f of something else, so I'll make those somethings the limits of my integration. Or maybe I'm glad that I'm writing f of x dx. Right, so this is exactly where I wanted to arrive. I will now do something that I actually don't like, but I'll pay homage to your calculus AP course and I'll rename x into u, because you think of it as integration by substitution. I think that it's a terrible thing. I have a video on that. It's called, I forget what it's called, but it contrasts the way we, we did it in Russia to the way we do it in America. And one of the points I make in that video is that just about everything in America is better than it is in Russia except for one or two things. And this was one of those one or two things. So right now I can only think of one thing, but, I, but I'm pretty sure there was maybe <laughs> one or two more things that are, better, that are better in Russia. And you see, this is exactly, so what do I wanna say? I wanna say that it's a formula, so he, here's the formula. The left-hand side is this, and the right-hand side is this. And you can see that it's basically a reformulation of the chain rule. But you can also state it as a change of variables. You see how we went from x to u. And so you guys would call it integration by substitution. Right. So let's, let me give you an example of how it's used. You might have an integral. I mean, clearly this will be incredibly contrived. Okay, so what you see is I specifically put in 
that chain rule pattern where it's a function of something and then as a factor we also have the derivative of that something. So I specifically put in that um, chain rule pattern and it is perhaps a little bit surprising that this pattern in not always so obvious way is present in so many integrals. One way or another we can find that pattern. It's a little bit surprising but that just it's just a fact of life. And so by this formula, well, <laughs> it's a poor choice to go from 0 to 1 because x squared would also go from 0 to 1. So let's actually go from 0 to 10 so that you see what happens. Okay, so by that formula it equals the integral of cosine of u du or I, again, I'm just buckling to pressure from 0 to 100 and this equals sine of 100. Should it be 1000 over 3? Yeah, 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 great. Okay, and I guess what I did was what all of my friends in this country would describe as using this substitution. So that's an example of using integration by substitution, but we need it on a more conceptual level because we'll just be seeing this combination very frequently. And our focus will be on this term because it is this term that will save the day for us uh, more than once. Thank you.